There was the Google memo mm -hmm. that went out, as they are calling it, the anti-diversity manifesto. Idiots. <laughs> now, uh, this news developed so fast, this happened after we aired last night, Google fired the employee who wrote the memo in record time. Record yeah. time. Record time, the guy just long. got absolutely canned. And as of this morning, the rumor is that Google has already replaced the employee in the spirit of diversity. She's actually a single black mother, transgender, pansexual, undocumented immigrant with a PhD in women's studies, and she has rickets. So she is a modern <laughs> marvel. <laughs> But she checks never, the boxes. Yeah, never firing that so, one. So <laughs> she's a neg negative attribute. <laughs> they, they not only fired him, the CEO took time out of his vac vacation to condemn this. As though, as though it was that yeah. outlandish and that offensive. So here, this is what the CEO said. We strongly support the right of Googlers to express themselves. Wait for it. <laughs> However, portions of the memo violate our code of conduct and cross the line by advancing harmful gender stereotypes in our workplace. Well, it doesn't do that. We'll get to that in a second. To suggest a group of our colleagues have traits that make them less biologically suited to that work is offensive and, like a 14-year-old girl, he says, not okay. <laughs> All caps. Because that's okay. how you talk to an actual <laughs> misogynist or an actual Klansman. That's not okay, bro. Not okay. It's not put, cool. Put you in your place, bro. To rape. It's not okay. I highly recommend that people go, and, and now it's out there, read the full memo yeah. for context. Don't take our word for it. This is what he goes out of his way, and Ben Shapiro highlighted this too, in the original memo. You tell me if this is gender stereotypes. I'm not saying that all men differ from all women in the following ways, or that these differences are just. I'm simply stating that the distribution of preferences and abilities of men and women differ in part due to biological causes, and that these differences may explain why we don't see equal representation of women in tech and leadership. Many of these differences are small, and there's significant overlap between men and women. So you can't say anything about an individual given these population level distributions. And this is this is what really bothers me when they say he just he just condemns women and says they're not fit. No, actually he 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 lists some areas where men might naturally be more effective than women. Not all, as he just said, but on the whole, yeah. you know, on average. Yeah. And then he goes on to list the qualities that women would naturally have or areas where women would naturally excel at over men. Like women in his own memo, women on average show a higher interest in people and men in things. That's a that's a good thing. Yeah. Women on average are more cooperative. And then here's something, subjective if you think it's, it's good or bad, I would say good. Women on average look for more work-life balance while men have a higher drive for status on average. Go back to the CEO, he says, the memo has clearly impacted our coworkers, some of whom are hurting and feel judged based on their gender. Um, so <laughs> just so you know, this, this memo it's incredible. was so earth shatteringly offensive oh. that some women at Google took a sick day. <laughs> the women were so offended that the memo insinuated they might handle stressful situations more emotionally that they decided work was too stressful to attend. Let me get it, let me, let, let, Wait, let me are you straight. saying what, that like as a woman, I'm more likely to take a sick day? I'm punching out, call it my sick day. I just, that's why you're seeing ads for Muslim singles because these are the women in charge of our advertising algorithms. Hey, could you put something relevant to the search? No, I can't, somebody said my thighs look big in these pants. <laughs> Hey, what about the restricted mode algorithm? 16-year-olds yeah. are seeing uh, X-rated films. Don't bother me right now, I feel <laughs> fat. Let's assume for a second that Google and YouTube is earnest. When they fly us out to New York to have our meetings and our summits, and they say they don't want to boot right-wingers, they say that they want to be friendly to differing opinions, they say that they want to be a friendly environment to conservatives and liberals alike. Let's assume that that's all true, take it at face value, okay? Here's the question. Would they be able to recognize their blind spots? Would they be able, that's the crux of this argument that we're actually having with this memo and the firing, would they be able to check their inherent biases if they wanted to? I would argue no. Let me present my case. Exhibit A, Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube. She's a Democrat donor, promotes the Young Turks, and advocates for transgenders in the military. She's a CEO of YouTube. She's not just a, le she's not just a liberal. She's a social justice warrior leftist. She uses words like microaggressions and trigger warnings <laughs> oh, unironically. <laughs> Exhibit B, Sundar Pichai. Pichai, I don't, I, see, he's a CEO of Google. Sounds okay? like a nut. <laughs> Democrat donor and of course advocates for transgenders in the military. Not, say, not even saying his opinion is wrong or that you shouldn't or should agree with him. I'm just trying to present to you the points of view of these people who are in charge of everything always at Google and YouTube, let alone the rest of Silicon Valley. Exhibit C, John Gianna, Gianna, see the only consistency in the hiring <laughs> is that they have very difficult names. He's a senior <laughs> VP for search at Google and a noted Democrat donor. Next person, Sridhar Ramaswamy, senior okay. VP for ads and commerce at Google. 
Huge Kamala Harris supporter and an actual Hillary Clinton donor. Next person, Sergey Brin, co-founder of Google, president of Google's parent company. Democrat donor gave 800,000 to a PAC that offered free rides to polling stations shortly before the election. I know you say, well, that's not necessarily right or left. No, of course it is, because we don't believe that people who need to be given rides and free sandwiches to polling stations, nor have ID, should probably be voting. But I know that's <laughs> racist. Next person, Chad Hurley. There's a the name. YouTube yeah. co-founder. There you go. Just a good old white guy. <laughs> YouTube co founder and advisor, noted Democrat donor. Next person, Danielle Brown. The names are getting easier. Google's head of diversity. In a twist of irony, Danielle Brown, head of diversity, not <laughs> Shuarma Kiki, uh, worked directly for Hillary Clinton's campaign. Next person, John Doerr, Google board member, Democrat support PAC donor, and he actually held a Democrat fundraiser. Back to hard names, Omid Kordistani, <laughs> former senior VP at Google, now executive chairman at Twitter uh, because of the incestuous Silicon Valley relationships. Democrat donor and a Trump hater on Twitter. So there's no idea of <laughs> conflicts of interest. Yeah, I'm sitting on the chair at Twitter, and I'm going to use it to bash the president on Twitter. Finally, we have David Drummond, senior VP at Google for corporate development, and he is a noted Democrat donor. Here's the takeaway there, and I want you to do your own research. Take a dartboard, take any of the senior executives at Google, Facebook, or Twitter, okay? Place their names on a dartboard. Throw the dart. Any name you hit is going to be not only a liberal, but a far left activist. Every single one. Now, they may be earnest. They may think that they really want to bridge the gap. They may think that they really want to have a dialogue. They may think that they really want to welcome all voices. But we see here with this letter, which was very carefully written, this memo, which went out of its way to do all of the, hey, listen, okay, to set the tone. I am not saying this applies across the board. I am not saying this is a plus or a minus. I just think we might want to discuss the differences. You're out of here! So clearly they're not looking to have a conversation. But even if they actually were, they would be incapable of it. They would, they, would, they would be incapable of it. Just pick anyone, anyone out there. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. It's, at, it's in a, it's a circle now. It used to be a square, which most buttons aren't squares. Unless it's on a phone. There are square buttons on phones, but most buttons are circles. You understand what I'm talking about. Or watch the recommended video, which is popping up in a box. Or subscribe at louderwithcredit.com slash mug club. Join the mug club so you can get the daily show. And that means that you are not beholden to the YouTube censoring overlords. But let's be honest. You like being there where you are, under their thumb. Power bottom you.